Hello, dear Pisces. Welcome to June. This is Gwendolyn. Welcome back to the channel. Or if it's your first time here, welcome. This video is going to be a monthly terrascope for Pisces for June. And as I shuffle the cards here, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the sky um, for this month. So we just ended uh, May with a full moon in Sagittarius, and that brought some truths to the surface that were for release, um, just purging old things that needed to come out and, um, you know, be released to the ethers for healing or just for clearer understanding. And in some ways, May may have felt severe. We just had Uranus enter Taurus, so there have been some shakeups. But it's all for forward progress. And June has a little bit of a lighter feel. It's got kind of this sparkly, fun energy to it. We just entered Gemini season. And we have a new moon in Gemini on June 13th. And this is really a special new moon. It's, it's got a feeling of good luck to it. It's um, well aspected with a lot of fixed stars. And it's in Gemini, which is in your fourth house, Pisces. So this may mean a new home for you or something new regarding your home. Maybe someone new is coming into your home or you're um, doing something new with the home, like a new renovation or a remodel or even planting a new garden. Um, but for some of you, it may be a literal opportunity for a new home or even just planting seeds about where you would like a new home to be. So it's fourth house, which is all related to the home, parenting, nurturing. For some of you, maybe becoming new parents. Um, and it's just got a really fun, sparkly, you know, spontaneous energy to it. Just like Gemini. If you think about how Gemini is sort of like Quicksilver, it's got that feeling to it. And then, um, and it kind of guides the rest of the month too. The Sabian symbol for the degree that it's hitting at Gemini is three fledglings in a tree. And it's just making me think of that Bob Marley song of three little birds where it just says everything's, every little thing's going to be all right. It's got this really just fun, sweet, innocent energy to it. And then at the end of the month, we have a full moon in Capricorn, which is in your 11th house, Pisces. And that's all about social structures, networks, um, your outer environment, humanity. So there may be something that you are releasing or that's coming to culmination in terms of your social circle or your friendships, things like that. Or it just may be highlighted and featured and illuminated there. This full moon is conjunct Saturn, so it may have a little bit of a heavy energy. Um, it may feel very serious, but it's sort of like the last full moon. It, it may have some um, truths that are being revealed. The Sabian symbol for this full moon is a veiled prophet speaks. So there may be further illumination that comes with this full moon. It's called the strawberry moon. But the purpose of it is to release things that are heavy and burdensome. So it's also making a nice aspect with Uranus again, um, in which case it can allow you to break free of that heaviness, of what feels like oppression or serious, overly serious um, feelings. And Uranus says, you know what, I want to shake things up. I want to revolutionize things. I want to allow you to break free and be liberated. So you can actually, you can go deeper into the seriousness of that full moon, or you can opt to sort of harness that Uranus energy of the revolutionary, the rebellion um, planet, and break free, liberate, become shake it off and you know sort of break out of that so I'm gonna just shuffle one more time here and then we'll get right into what's coming up for Pisces for June it looks like it's gonna be an exciting fun month so I, I love this Gemini um, season and especially with that new moon on the 13th it's really got some fun energy to it so let's see what's coming up you've got the page of wands daughter of fire in reverse and then a uh, small medicine wheel, which is equivalent to the wheel of fortune. That's another symbol of good luck. Um, just 
things changing, things turning in your favor, Pisces. Then we have Seven of Water in reverse, which is called Excess in this deck. Usually means having lots of options. Father of Air, which is King of Swords. Um, so there could be an air sign involved. Four of Air, Contemplation. Uh, Son of Air, which is the Knight of Swords. Looks like things may happen quickly after a period of contemplation in the middle of the month. Then we have Four of Fire, which is completion. Again, interestingly, that has to do with the home. So it's echoing that new moon right in the middle of the month, that new moon in Gemini in your fourth house, Pisces. Then we have Vision Quest in reverse. Five of Staves or Five of fi Fire. And then Ace of Water, Ace of Cups. That's a beautiful card here at the end of the month. Clown in reverse, which is the equivalent to Fool. And then we finish up with Nine of Earth, which is called Accumulation in this deck. So I'm going to go through each of the cards and let's take a look at what's happening. The first card I see is Daughter of Fire. So this is Page of Wands in reverse. And whenever I see this card, I always think of a really active teenager. This is fire energy, and it means fire going in all directions. Usually in the upright position, this is a card of optimism, motivation, passion, action. I always think of a, um, an athlete that's saying, just put me in the game, coach. Just get me in there. I'm ready. And so it's young energy, but it's kind of unbridled fire energy. It's like going in all directions. So what this says is you may need to contain any fire energy that you have. You may want to go in like 10 directions at once. But it's saying, you know, it might be worthwhile to slow down and harness that energy in one direction to be a little bit more mature in your approach and have a little bit more focus. In reverse, this card can be very unfocused. It can just be like, you know, trying to cover all bases at once when really it would be more um, practical to do things one thing at a time. So that's what this is saying is maybe if you're having restless energy and you want to go, 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 um, it's saying, you know, pull it back a little bit. Take it easy. Maybe don't rush forward with action. Sometimes this can be action without thought. And then I see good things happening here for you've got small medicine wheel, which is the wheel of fortune. This means, um, again, good luck. Things, tables are turning. Who is on the bottom will be on top and who is on the top will be on the bottom. It means the changing of the seasons. It means being patient with allowing time to evolve things in the way that they naturally do. It's not trying to push things going faster, and it's not trying to slow things down, but it's it's going in accordance with the natural unfolding of time. So when this card appears, it's, it's saying that you are just sort of going with the flow. You're allowing things to unfold. You're turning with the seasons as they go. And you're allowing, it's a real card of allowing because you're allowing what is happening to happen and not trying to force it, not trying to restrict it, but actually just allowing it, allowing time to unfold as it naturally does. So that's, but these say it's, these cards say that at the opening of June, you're allowing things to just be in the flow. You know, don't don't try to expend too much energy into forcing anything or making anything happen or um, trying to go in too many directions at once. This can be unbridled energy, and it's saying, you know, just slow it down, take it easy, take a pause, just let things roll. And then here you have Seven of Water in reverse, which in this deck is called Excess. And with this card, I think Aquarius got this too, where it's in reverse, it may mean letting go of options that are no longer serving you. In the upright, Seven of Water can usually mean having lots of choices. You can see that there's two vessels here that are holding water, and then some of them are cracked and are draining water out of them. Water usually represents emotional energy. So with the reverse Seven of Water excess, it means that you may be trimming things away, trimming things out, like taking things out that aren't serving you. Maybe you had a connection um, that was emotionally based that is draining you instead of filling you. And this means you're you're culling away the vessels that aren't that are draining water out, essentially, the ones that aren't holding anything. And keeping the ones that are solid, are whole, are 
um, providing sustenance to you. So I'm kind of just seeing this as clearing clutter um, in terms of options and choices and trim trimming the fat. Like, you know, if this is a card of excess, in the reverse, it's saying it's getting rid of the excess, getting rid of the vessels that aren't holding water. Um, and then we have Father of Air. This is King of Swords. So this is someone who is usually an expert in their field. There's someone who is very logical, rational, analytical, speaks clearly and precisely. And they're usually in alignment with truth. In the reverse, it can mean that that they are not um, speaking their truth. But I'm seeing with Father of Air, it could just be an an air sign that's involved that would be Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. So this is saying, um, you know, just observe your involvements with someone who is very rational, logical, um, very direct, and see if you can learn from that, but also learn from the the low side of that, which can be manipulation or not speaking truthfully, you can learn from both the high side and the low side of this card, in the upright and the reverse. So that's that's showing up for you as well. Then I see we have Four of Air coming up, which is a time of rest, time of recuperation. I call this the R&R &R card. Um, and Four of Swords means taking a break, thinking things over, not taking action, which also echoes this card here. These, these cards here are both fire cards. We've got the Four of Fire and the Daughter of Fire, and so they're really active cards. And, what, and this card is called Stress. It's also known as a conflict card. I sometimes call it playing versus fighting. But what this is saying is take a break. Don't get involved in where all the fire energy is, the unbridled fire. You know, just take a pause and take a break from the action. Reflect. Um, this is a card of being quiet, of recuperating, reflecting on things, thinking about things, meditating, just letting your thoughts sort of turn over in your mind. In many of the cards, or many decks, it's got three swords hanging up on the wall, which is figurative of hanging your thoughts up on the wall, and just kind of musing on things, not taking any direct action. So that's showing up for you at the middle of the month. Then I see the Sun of Air, which is quite different from this card, which means going forward quickly. Once you've sort of thought things over and reflected on things here at the middle of the month, this is charging forward. This is a take no prisoners card. This is a card of speaking first and thinking later. So he is very direct, very blunt, very he's very incisive. So he can he's logical just like this king. Um, but sometimes he rushes forward too quickly. So be careful when this card shows up for you that you haven't been saving up all your reserves of thought and then you just let it all out in one big burst. You may want to pace yourself, but I see a lot of forward movement. Um, after this pause, I see another card of stability. This is Four of Fire, which is completion, again relating to the home. There may be something that you're completing and starting anew in terms of your home, Pisces, especially in the middle of the month in this new moon in Gemini in your fourth house of the home. So something's completing and very potentially something new is being planted. You may be um, venturing out and exploring new horizons with this card and it may be you know a completion regarding the home what else we have here in the middle of the month is vision quest in reverse so this is a card of revelation of seeing what's possible it's a card of having sort of a, an epiphany having a vision come to you and seeing where it is that you want to go he's heading off into you know another vista so with this in reverse, there may be some fear, doubt, or resistance into about heading into another vista, having a new vision, going somewhere that is beyond your normal routine. And I'm going to encourage you to look at whatever fear, doubt, or resistance is showing up for you. This is like a new chapter, and it's a new insight. 
largely because of this contemplation, I believe, and then being able to go forward because of a completion here. So I'm just going to ask you, Pisces, what is the fear, doubt, or resistance to embracing this new revelation, this new vision, this new idea, this new insight? Um, because that's very much there for you. And then towards the end of the month, there's a couple of things that are going on. It's really interesting. You've got the Fool, which is the zero card. It's the potential energy. Anything is possible. Nothing is formed. And then you also have an ace here. And aces are new beginnings. This has to do with a new beginning of the heart. Um, new love. You can see, I sometimes call this card, my cup runneth over. But it may require you to pass through some sort of conflict or competition that has to do with fire energy. This is usually a bunch of people competing for the same thing. It's a, car it's a very Mars-based card. There can be a lot of aggression with this. Sometimes it's sport or open warfare, but it's competition. And I like to look at this card as playing versus fighting. You know, a lot of times it's called stress in this deck and a lot of times it's looked at as a card of real conflict. But I also like to look at it as, you know, um, you can either get involved in a war or a fight or you can look at it as play and you can adopt a playful attitude towards it. So on the lighter side, this could be a card of flirtation or it could be a card of laughing at your problems or seeing, seeing sport for what it really is. So I'm going to encourage you, Pisces, if you come towards the end of the month here and you're feeling like others are trying to engage you in competition or that you are being met with aggression or anything like that, then you just adopt a lighthearted, playful attitude towards it and see it as play. Um, that's the lighter side of this card. And then I see potential for, you know, new love, new beginning in terms of your heart feeling like your heart is flowing over with emotion that your cup runneth over this is a real card of new joy new passion new creativity feeling totally immersed in something as far as your heart goes so that's a nice beginning and you know that you may be fearful or resistant to taking a leap of faith this is the clown card which is also equivalent to the fool and there's this image of this big cat behind him which usually symbolizes strength and you can see he's just about to jump off this cliff um, it's a real card of faith of trust of feeling like the world is open to you and it's a card also of being carefree and light-hearted fool also has a great sense of humor this is like the comedian card um, so is there a fear Pisces with this in reverse about taking a leap of faith taking, um, having faith or having, um, trust in the universe? Is there something that is keeping you from that? Because it is showing up for you and it is connected to this accumulation card. This is nine of coins, which means having made some good decisions and having had self-discipline of putting yourself in a good place. So I, what I get the sense Pisces, especially towards the end of the month with this full moon and Capricorn in your 11th house, is that by confronting whatever your fears are with taking this leap of faith, with believing that all things are possible, with having the sense of humor and flexibility, that you actually, if you're able to remove that level of fear, doubt, or resistance, you actually put yourself in a very good place, very stable, very... Um, you know, it's full of, of riches and things that are ready to be harvested. It's, a, it's allowing these riches to come to you through the belief and the faith that they're possible. In the reverse, it's saying, I don't trust it. I don't believe it's possible. Therefore, it doesn't come. That, that fear, doubt, or resistance keeps it at bay. But if you're able to challenge that, to open your heart, to receive it, it's all there you know, the accumulation, the good decisions that you've made so far, the self-discipline that you've had so far, this lightness and this open-heartedness brings you a lot of riches, a lot of, um, you know, fruits on the vine. So I'm going to encourage you to, <laughs> it's funny I use that word, encourage you to have courage, you know, trust that this big cat is there behind you supporting you. This is your strength. This is your own um, courage. It comes from the word, the French word for heart. You know, trust your heart. Trust 
trust trust is a big word for that um, card of the clown or the fool. Have trust and faith, and then good things come to you. So that's my reading for you, Pisces, for June. I think it's going to be a really fun, really lighthearted, sort of, again, just sparkly month full of potential energy for you. Um, you may want to take some time to reflect and not have, you know, unbridled going forward motion. You might just want to think things over after you've, you've sort of separated things and, and find out what, what serves you and what is um, dissipating energy and then see if you can embrace this new vision see if you can embrace this new trust this new faith and potentially this new love um, and if if there are conflicts that come to you try to keep a light-hearted attitude towards them look at it as play instead of challenge and conflict so that is my reading and if you enjoyed it feel free to give it a thumbs up or share it with another pisces if you have any questions or comments feel free to put those below and i love to respond to those and if any of you are looking for life coaching sessions my friend Jeannie um, is a life coach she's wonderful and i will have a link to her website down below it's jeannielawrence.com and if you'd ever like to book a personal reading with me, you can do that at readingsbygwendolyn.com. And as always, I just want to thank everyone so much for watching Yours and the Stars.